Are you one of those people who is looking for the right answer? Before you make a change, are you getting caught up in the fears that in your in your head and just wanting a clearly laid plan? Well, that's not going to happen. And what you need to understand is that the only right action is the one that is going to work for you. Today, I am talking with a profound coach who is going to give you some tips and strategies so that when you are ready to make a change in your world, whether it's personal or professional, it's going to help unlock you on your path to greatness. I'm Clara Capano, and this is Women Winning Their Way. Welcome to the show. I am so excited to be talking about how as women, we can win our way. And I have an amazing guest with me today. Um, we were connected several months ago and I have Nissan Sheftel Gomez with here. And um, I just think we need to dive on into it. So how are you today? I'm great. Thank you for having me. I'm excited for this conversation. And yes, let's get into it. Love it. So, you know, the title of the show is Women Winning Their Way. We talk about breaking down barriers, expectations, living outside the box. When I talk about women winning their way, what comes to your mind when you hear that phrase? I think for me, it's that uh, women living their way. It's, it's really about knowing who you are in your core self and having the sort of strength uh, in the day to day, you know, existence we all live in of keeping that grounding, um, mm -hmm. even as things are coming at you, opportunities, you know, challenges, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think it's really about that, having a direct line to yourself. Yeah. And I'm sure just like me, it's always been a smooth line for you to success. There's never been any upsets on your journey. Um, but can you maybe tell us about a time where maybe you felt you weren't living authentically you, you weren't living on your terms and how you took that control back. Yeah, that's, it's such a good question. I know we all have examples. So I know, like, you know, it's like, where do I start? I think for, for this example, I think the, the thing that I will share is that I kind of woke up into my forties with a pretty complex, like full life. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't feeling like myself, right? Like, I'm like, I've done all these things that are supposed to be markers of success, you know, as I've been told by my family and my mm -hmm. educational life and, you know, the career to date. And I still don't feel like I'm headed in a direction that I want to head in. Mm -hmm. But I had no real kind of vision for where I was going. And I was just overwhelmed with responsibility uh, giving a lot exteriorly to, you know, others and really giving very little to myself. Yeah. Um, I think so many of us get to that point, you know, I guess that's why they call it, you know, a midlife crisis. I know I was there too, where we're like, I did all the right things. So why is it that I still feel empty? So tell us a little bit, because your journey and my journey were very similar. What was your career in which you were quote unquote, doing all the right things? Yeah, I well, so I started out in uh, publishing and then in my late 20s, I decided to go to law school. Mm -hmm. You know, I really thought, OK, this is going to straighten things out. <laughs> yeah, because you're going to have a solid career that yep. has a good paycheck and it's stable and it's it got a cool. great title. So once we do all that, it's going to be great. Yeah. Now, the one thing I'll say is that I started with a two year old, which I would not recommend. You know? <laughs> Yeah. That's not necessarily how people do it. But I thought, you know, even more of a, a motivation for me to keep going because I really wanted to show up solid, you know, as a mom. And I was a single parent. And so it was really, really important to me to kind of manage to raise this child by myself. Yeah. Um, but the law is a tough field. It's a tough field for anyone, but I think it's particularly challenging when you are a black woman, a, a single mother, mm -hmm. um, you know, kind of stepping into a career that I had no prior exposure to through family or, you know, friends and really trying to show up like I knew 
you know, some, some of what I was talking about. Mm -hmm. And that uh, took a lot of energy because, you know, the law expects you to kind of come knowing answers. Mm. Um, And so for me, it was like, how do I show up here every day with all the answers? When you don't have the answers. (laughs) Right. You're kind of just winging it. Mm -hmm. Um, That's sort of the whole, that's the job. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Uh, And then how do I then go home and be on at full capacity Mm -hmm. there? And I think what happened was I got burnt out. (laughs) Sure. Understandable. I think most of us do that. You know, I would love to ask you because, you know, my trajectory was very similar and that I thought I was going to go the route of going into law as well. And one of the reasons that I did it is because I had this sort of inkling of wanting to be a speaker or doing training, but I didn't, I couldn't conceptualize it and I couldn't articulate it. So Mm. when people told me no one's ever going to pay you to do stuff like that, I unfortunately listened. And so I went into this field of law because it had the prestige and it had the big paycheck that I thought would come through it. And again, I really thought, you know, once I did that, everything else would fall into place. Did you find that when you sort of had this moment of waking up and you're like, I don't want to do this anymore. How did you, one, face your own personal fears of jumping ship as a single mom of being like, well, if I pivot, I've got to let go of that security. And then also, how did you face maybe the, I don't want to use the word ridicule, but face the the sort of the naysayers of, are you crazy? Why would you leave a sure thing? Yeah. Uh, both really good questions. And I'm going to be very honest about that first one. I still work at facing fears. Like, I don't think that's something that you get, you know, through and you're done. Mm-hmm. You, at each stage, you face new fears. And so I will say it took five years or so to get from ideation stage to taking the leap out of the sure thing, you know, and that uh, was only to get me to this point I'm at now. And now I'm facing a whole new set of fears. Yeah. You know, as an entrepreneur, like trying to make a business, you know, Mm -hmm. stay afloat, manage all aspects of that. And also like, just kind of be able to show up as a regular human being every day. Absolutely. Um, Yeah. So the fear I think is that's part of the practice is what I've determined is how do you live with fear and how do you kind of use it to your benefit and not allow it to keep you frozen? Yeah. And I love that, that idea of using the fear to not keep you frozen. How have you been able to do that? Is sort of your fear of staying the same greater than your fear of going into the unknown? Like how, how did you reconcile with that fear and use it as leverage? It's a really good question. And I think I think the answer is you kind of have to harness it mm-hmm. and you have to know when to take it seriously and when to know that that could just be a protective part of you that is like trying to keep you small so you don't mess up and all the stuff that we kind of learn to do in order to exist in the world. But if you can harness that feeling of like, well, really, this is a sign, right? This fear is a sign that I have reached the edge of the cliff. I don't know what's on the other side, mm-hmm. you know. But I could look over. Like I, it, I'm not blind. I can, I can actually see. I just have to allow that fear to dissipate enough mm-hmm. in order to see. Like, okay, step by step, just like everything else. Yeah. And then you're, you can move through it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So how did you deal with those people around you that might have thought you were crazy? I didn't talk to them. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so simple. Don't talk to them. Absolutely. You know, I figured out who my champions were. I figured out who was doing similar things because mm-hmm. sometimes, you know, the naysayers are afraid too. You know, they they have dreams that they might want to get out and try, but no one's given them the go ahead. And, you know, they're afraid, too. So 
Uh, I think I was able to do that by reaching into new communities of people. I was I joined a women's coaching group. That was a really amazing opportunity during the pandemic that came to me and having other women around who were grappling with similar kinds of places in their own lives was so helpful in terms of just being able to know like, okay, this is really how I'm supposed to be feeling right now. Right. Like if I wasn't feeling scared, something might be wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. So true. And I just love how, how simple it is of, again, find your champions, really spend more time. And you know, you're right. So many people out there have these unfulfilled dreams. And a lot of times that's why they become the naysayers is because they either are not at the point where they're ready to take the leap, or maybe somebody diminished their light, yeah. which you know caused them from, from taking that leap of faith. I would love to rewind time just a little bit. Let's okay. just say, because not everybody who's going to be following the show is an entrepreneur. Several of them have the standard job and they love their job. They aren't really intending on leaving, nor do they have to. Yet, yeah. going back to what you said about showing up and giving your all and then still coming home and having to give your all on this concept of burnout. If you could rewind time and do things differently, let's say that you did love your job and you weren't thinking of leaving, could you have done some things differently? Like what advice would you give to that woman who is sort of teetering on the edge to keep her from burning out? Did you learn anything in your journey that maybe, again, if you could rewind time, you would have done a little differently? Yeah, I learned so much. <laughs> <laughs> Still learning, but but really, I think when I look back at um, some of the more challenging moments and the you know, and you hit burnout multiple times in your career, I think that happens, yes. and especially when you're doing the kind of work that I was doing, which is people centered, and mm -hmm. often folks are coming to you in crisis. So you're also maybe dealing with like vicarious trauma. Sure. And so I think depending on the work you're doing, right, you've got to be aware of like what aspects of your work bring trauma. Because mm. it's very, very real. And we don't talk about that enough. And so I think people often live with very traumatic work experiences or come into work with prior trauma mm -hmm. from other workplaces and don't have anywhere for that to kind of, you know, get out or be seen. So I think that is... That's one place. What was the other? What was the question again? I know I'm getting just again, you know, if you could rewind time at, you know, what advice would you give to, you know, that woman to maybe yeah. how we can reapproach things to keep us from burning out or if we notice it to minimize it as much as possible? Yeah. So I think that part is also very much about recognizing your limits. A lot of times, uh, you know, hardworking, high powered women, we don't say no mm -hmm. enough. Uh, I don't even, I think a lot of my clients don't even recognize that they have the right to say no or that they have a, a say and control over their career and how that career unfolds. And workplaces, you know, kind of have to work with you, even though they don't always do that well. But if you can show up in your power around, like, I have certain things I'm trying to accomplish here in my workplace and I have certain limitations and work, you know, to, to be able to communicate around those things. I think that you mm -hmm. can actually do more than you imagine in terms of like steering your career, as opposed to feeling like you're just a passenger on the ship and you have no say. Right. You know, and you just said something that was really powerful and I'm not even sure if, if you noticed it, but I want to call attention to it because you said that in your coaching, which is what you have been called to do now, you know, you work with others teaching them how they can be more in control of their careers, which is exactly what we're talking about. So what are some of the strategies and maybe some of the, the techniques that you walk your people through to demonstrate to them and to connect them with the fact that they do have more control than they sometimes think they do? So a lot of times they're coming at a crisis point, something that like, you know, push them to seek mm -hmm. some, some outside support. And so we're often starting out with an assessment to sort of see, well, where are you at and where would you like to be? What mm -hmm. is working? What is not working? And really having a, a way of doing that. What are the ways in which you're assessing? What are some of the like basic aspects of your day-to-day -day that are important that you need to be aware of and that you can assess from there? 
And then I think it's a lot of times people's vision for themselves and whether it's directly in the career they're in or whether they're trying to transition into something else is not clear. You know, we've, you've been on a path, right? You like went to the school and then the school said, this is the next step. And then you go to the next step. And so sometimes you've lost a sense of that purpose. Like what is it that drives you that really does bring you um, the energy that will get you through your day? Yeah. Um, And so we do a lot of work around that understanding core values, basic needs, you know, being honest with ourselves about where we might be in our own way Mm -hmm. and doing some work to kind of, you know, work with those parts of ourselves to kind of move them to the side and get everyone on board. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. The the internal, you know, board on board Mm -hmm. to work with us to make change because change is a process. So I really try to basically do that initial assessment, figure out what we need and, and where uh, purpose is really going to lie. And then we do that work of moving toward goals. Absolutely. Do you know that less than 75% of people do not get enough sleep? I know for years that this was something I struggled with. I would fall into bed exhausted, only to then toss and turn all night long and wake up feeling unrested. Sleep is critical to our health, well-being, and productivity. I am so excited to partner with Lisa Gibb and Som V, who have crafted the perfect night's sleep. We cannot walk around like sleep zombies the next day. Lisa and her team at Som V understand this. And with over 40 years of quality craftsmanship, Som V sheet sets are designed to create a perfect environment to offer you a restful night's sleep. They use the highest quality fabrics and they have products that focus on temperature regulation. Ladies, you know what I mean about that. With their products that include mattress enhancers to sheet sets, lots of different kinds of unique pillows, comforters, blankets, and more. They literally have you covered and ready for a quality night's sleep. All the products with Som V will wrap you in luxury each and every night. The people at Som V are committed to one thing, a quality night's sleep. So connect with Lisa Gibb, your personal sleep consultant, and build your personal and luxury sleep package today. Connect with Lisa at www.lisagibb.somvie.com. Invest in your rest with Som V today. I love that you brought up the idea of vision. This is something that I talk a lot in my workshops and everything is getting that clarity of vision. And I think that sometimes we discount the power that we have, you know, even though I might work for another company, I am still the CEO of my life. And if I don't have a vision for what I want my life to look like, our career, our work being a part of that, you know, what is it I want to look like? Do I want more flexibility? You know, is being home at dinner or being able to leave so I can take my kids to the doctor? that part of the vision? You know, is it being able to to teach classes or to be a mentor? Is that part of the vision? You know, because if we need to be able to go to our bosses, to our clients and say, hey, this isn't working for me anymore. We need to be able to paint the picture of what it would need to look like in order for it to work. So I love that you take time to work with people because I think a lot of people are confused on that vision and also don't think they have the freedom to actually create their own vision when they work for a company. Would you agree with that? I would, I would. And I I think a lot of the work I'm doing with leaders around growing teams and and developing teams is that very piece, is recognizing that people have, you know, growing spurts and then they have, you know, plateaus. Like there, you've gotta be able to meet each individual on your team where they're at recognizing that everything you just said is true and be able to support and develop them as well, not just kind of show up in your own grounded sense of self. Right. 
Absolutely. So we talked about this idea of breaking outside of the box, breaking out of the norm. And you did that. You know, you had a traditional career as an attorney and you decided to pivot and, you know, go against the grain and dive into something that was unknown and become more of an entrepreneur. Are there any other, you know, areas or maybe examples of how you chose to do things on your terms? That, you know, would be a great example of showing other women how we can, again, take that control back. Ooh, I mean, uh, I, I, I will just start with the idea to even try something different. Mm -hmm. um, you know, whether whether at first initially I thought I just needed a new job, you know, <laughs> so then I was spending a good amount of time kind of figuring out, well, what is that? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, and I think ultimately it took having a number of crisis things occur, including a death of someone very close to me to kind of make me recognize like life is very short. And uh, in order to, you know, really live it, sometimes you really do have to break out of the norms or the prescribed roots. And, you know, especially if you're someone who has a lot of different talents or interests or, you know, even just one <laughs> that isn't what you do for a living. Um, I always try to help my clients also recognize that their job is not the only thing that defines a life, right? Like you said, how do you want to live that life? What, yeah. if you are planning a family, what kind of parent do you want to be, you know, mm -hmm. on a day-to-day -day basis? Yeah. And recognizing, you know, and I will say that I didn't plan any of this. The, you know, some people can plan ahead. I didn't. And I still think you can you can show up with this level of like in attunement to, mm -hmm. you know, what you need in order to live a more fulfilled existence. Yeah. Love that. And I think you're absolutely right. There is more to life than the title on our business card or on our door and really connecting with that. I think it's it's extremely powerful. So just some kind of nuts and bolts to it. If there is somebody out there that is looking to make a change, whether mm -hmm. it's going from a, a standard career to more of an entrepreneurial one, or even just shifting from some one path to the other, yeah. you know, learning what you did when you sort of left from one realm to the other, you know, are there maybe some, some basic steps that you would encourage somebody to do as far as the, the structural elements of doing it the right way? Yeah. Well, first I want to just say, I don't know if there is a right way. And I, I would like to say, I don't think there is a right way. Yeah. Yeah. To say that mm -hmm. I think the right way is whatever is suitable for you um, and that you yourself can really show up in authentic, consistent ways. Mm -hmm. For me, I can share that for my transition, and I said it was like five years, it was slow. It involves first deciding um, after having a, a personal experience with coaching in the workplace that that was an incredibly valuable tool that I also wanted to have going and getting training, practicing, kind of trying to figure out, well, what is this tool going to be for me? How am I going to make it my own? That took another couple years. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, at work, I was looking toward the transition. Okay. So I was already aware I was leaving and I was trying to, think that way as I was taking on new work or getting involved in different aspects of the organization or thinking about, huh, I could gain some new skills in this role. This might be really useful for me later when I'm running my own business, you know, if I'm doing the general counsel work right now. Yeah. So I was able to do it in a way that kept me uh, at least intellectually engaged at work, even as I was building this whole other vision that I didn't even fully see mm -hmm. the side. And I just kind of did that side by side until the, you know, balance was off and it started feeling more like the business needed more of my time and energy than I could give it in mm -hmm. that moonlighting stage. Mm -hmm. And so then I had to start thinking about how to make that transition. And for me, it was lucky. I was able to go from being a full-time employee in my role to consulting in a part-time capacity so that I was able to kind of make it a, a less painful mm -hmm. financial adjustment. Sure. 
Um, but I will say it has still been an adjustment. I'm learning, still learning quite a bit as it relates to that. And it's not always smooth. But for me, that that was a good way to do it. And I know some people don't need to do that, right? Like mm-hmm. they are ready to go. They don't have necessarily like kids to send to college and like, you know, pay tuition for. So, you know, depending on where you're at, that's kind of part of your assessment of, you know, if I'm going to make a pivot right now, what do I have currently at my disposal that I can work with? Because I always say, like, don't throw it all out, right? Mm-hmm. There were moments I thought about that. I was like, I'm just never going to be a lawyer again. Right. Like, but now I'm like, wait, that's actually impossible. There's skill sets there that I still utilize, that I want to be using, that I can use in a different way based on my own vision of how to do that. And that has opened up a lot more opportunity along the way. I love that. Fantastic. <laughs> You know, you have just really accomplished, you know, so much. Again, I love that you embraced who you are. You were very true and honest with yourself. You know, you did the due diligence to do things, you know, the best way for for you that you could find. And in doing so, you are really showing and letting your truth bring a level of comfort to so many others to again, let them know that if they have this inkling, if they have this desire, there is a way to do it. And I, I just think that that's really beautiful. And I know that, you know, your your path as a coach, you're really able to support so many others. And I know that you're not even anywhere near to being done with this part of your journey. So tell us a little bit about what's next for you. Well, first, thank you for for that recognition. I, it does feel like that, right? Like that this is a very new and exciting moment where there's a lot of potential and opportunity. Mm-hmm. I think for me right now, what I'm interested in working on is continuing to share the knowledge I have based on experience. I'm working on a course for uh, people going through divorce, how to kind of prepare yourself for the process before you ever go about hiring any professionals so that you know how best to utilize the systems and not be used by the systems. Very helpful. I wish that was around, you know, 13, 14 years ago. (laughs) I'm I'm making the course I wish I had. Mm -hmm. And I'm also working on a book, um, which will be part memoir, part how to about work. Yeah. Um, Love that. Well, when you get that finished, you got to come back and help us. Pro- we'll help promote it for you because I know there's going to be tons of wisdom in there as well. So I love that. To bring us full circle, you know, I started off the conversation by talking about how you would define and think about women winning their way. What I'd love to ask you now as we close out our show is sitting where you sit today, how do you define success for you for yourself now? I think the the way I'm defining it now has to do with like, how is, how's my health? Mm -hmm. How does my body feel? (laughs) Very kind of rudimentary approaches, but it's a a thing I never got to think about in my prior career. I literally just went, 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 went until I dropped. And uh, that's not sustainable for anybody, let alone, you know, somebody who's, managing a family and a career and whatnot. Yeah. So for me, it's health as well, being able to be kind of in the integrity of what is important to me and the work I'm doing every day, Mm -hmm. and then being able to give back and build community around it. That to me is, I'm at the pinnacle of my success. Beautiful. Well, Nassan, thank you again so much for being here. I really love your words. I know that you have brought so much value and all your information is going to be in the show notes. So for those of you that are following, reach out, you know, let's follow each other. And again, if you do know someone going through a change, a pivot, whether it's divorce or a career change, you know, know that you got a great resource here. So thanks again for being a guest on Women Winning Their Way. Thank you so much, Claire. This has been a great conversation. What a powerful conversation. And there were so many nuggets in there. And I really hope that you took them to heart because I jotted down several of them. So in our conversation, one of the first things that came up is fear. Never going to get rid of fear. It's just going to be a new kind of fear. So don't be afraid of the fears. Don't let them govern you. Use them as fuel. And just know you're never going to be free from fear. It's just new chapters and new 
new paths for them. Um, I love when she talked about follow success. Anytime you're looking to make a change, whether it's changing jobs or maybe moving on from a relationship or going for that promotion, identify who has already had success. And one of the best things she said is when you find people who are going to be the naysayers, just don't talk to them. Again, you have the ability to walk away or not even engage in those conversations. Powerful, powerful, powerful. Recognize your limits. We are not meant to be superwoman. So take your cape, take your little superhero cape and go ahead and put it away. Bring it out maybe at Halloween, but you can put it away all the other days. Know your limits. You do not have to do it all. You do not have to know it all. So give yourself some grace. Know your vision and especially this. I love when she said there is more to your life than just what you do. So craft your vision, not just about what you want to do in business, but also your vision for your life. And then one of the fi final things that she talked about, there is no right way. Your way is the right way. So even though you might want to learn from others and look at patterns of success, stop looking for the magic bullet. Stop looking for the right answer because the only right answer is the one that's going to work for you. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please make sure that you like the show, follow the show, and also share the show. I implore you, share this episode with at least five other people in your circle because we know that people are going through changes and everybody needs some help. So thanks for being a part of this conversation. We will be back next week with brand new episodes. I am Clara Capano, and this is Women Winning Their Way.